Hello and welcome back to the KCC channel. I'm Rob and I hope you are having a wonderful day today. Today I have an epic single story for you from the Pro Revenge subreddit. Before we start that, if you're new here, make sure to hit that subscribe button. It's completely free and you can always change your mind later. But if you stick around, my friend Carmen here just might have some cookies for you in the near future. All right, on to the story. Let's jump right in. This story comes to us from Forsaken Salad 1623. So sue me? Can do. I am a military veteran who was injured in Iraq. I mention only because it is important to the story. I worked for this company. I say company, but in reality, it was a guy who owned a few businesses, and he was the richest person in a very small town. It's important to say how I made it to this situation. I will try and make it quick so I can get to the steak and taters, as it were. I joined the military before I even completed high school, late birthdays and all of that. I chose a military career path that I figured I would enjoy, and since I love working on things, I became a mechanic. It offered a great sign-on bonus, so that was a bonus. I went through basic, only ever spending money on necessities, so saved up quite a lot. Saved even more through advanced training for my MOS military job. By the time I was done with both, I had half of my sign-on bonus and just short of an entire year's pay in my bank account. At my age, most would have splurged. I invested in the stock market, Bitcoin, and paid off my parents' house. A couple of deployments, the other half of my bonus, and the only thing I really ever spent money on outside of necessities was my hot rod. Needless to say, I had some money saved up and invested it also. Long story short, when I discharged, I was pretty comfortable even after a nasty divorce. Don't get me wrong, I didn't and don't have stupid money, but because of the divorce, a lot of stocks were cashed out, split, and if anyone follows Bitcoin over the past two decades, you know how that turned out. After my divorce, I worked to recover what I lost, and then just to keep busy. Like I said, I love working as a mechanic and would bounce around wherever I felt like since a good mechanic can make money anywhere. After a decade of this, I decided to set roots in a small town since it would be nice and quiet. By this point, I was tired of always working on other people's cars and wanted to devote time to working on my car. I bought a small house and saw a help wanted sign at the local lube shop. Figured it would be simple work for me and be something to cover my few expenses. I grab an application from the office, getting all kinds of looks from the townies. By the way, I am 6 foot 3. Since I discharged from the military, I stopped cutting my hair and shaving, and I have one full sleeve. Needless to say, most people cross the street instead of walk past. When I went to turn in my application to, we will call her Sue, the bookkeeper, she asked me a couple of questions, noticed I checked I was a veteran, and put a Y on my application. Later that day, Sue calls me and asks if I would come back in to meet the owner. Let's call him Peter. I agree, and Sue says Peter will be there in an hour, so if I come in, then we can talk about the position. I show up, and Peter's eyes bulge at first sight, but we get to chatting, and my southern charm wins him over. He tossed me a calendar that he had made of his car collection, and asks me to name off the ones I recognized. There were a couple of Mustangs, a Ford GT, a Bricklin SV1, a Judge, a Demon, a Pantera, and an MXT. He was impressed that I knew what the SV1 was, and we chatted cars for a bit. He offered me the position and explained that I would be paid $100 a day, and that I would work Monday to Saturday from 8 to 6, no overtime, but I would get a full day's pay even if we closed shop early for some reason, and eat when I could. I would be off every Sunday and one extra day during the week. Awesome start and work maybe a year, no issues. Peter asks if I could help him out by being a relief worker for his other lube shops in neighboring towns. He says he will give me $20 every day for travel and basically I would be covering so guys could take days off at the other stores. I agreed and did this for about a year. Then disaster strikes. Peter meets Karen and falls madly in love. In the span of a month, they are married, and he starts supporting her and her gambling problem. This is when all of the problems start. 
One week, I noticed my paycheck was only $250 and asked about it. Sue tells me apparently there have been some changes and I should really speak to Peter about it. Sure, no problem. I call up Peter and ask if we can talk about some things. He shows up with Karen in tow and when I asked why my pay was short, he tells me it was because of the bad weather and us closing early affected the business. I would have let it go at that because Peter was a nice guy, but Karen decided to speak. It isn't very fair to us to have to pay you for a full day if you don't work the full 10 hours. I said that would be true if I wasn't on a negotiated day rate and if I get paid for each day I work, not hourly, that's why I don't get paid 19 hours overtime each week. She claims that's not how it works anymore, that from now on, I would be paid for the hours I worked and nothing else. Okay, whatever you say, Karen. Fast forward to the next week, we had a week's worth of very busy days where we were open a couple hours later than normal to finish up with waiting customers. And I gave up one of my days off to cover for a sick coworker. So when what should have easily been over an $800 paycheck was only $600, I had some questions. I called Peter and asked him what was going on, why I only got paid $600, and he says, well, that's what we agreed on, $100 a day. I look at him blankly and ask if he forgot about last week, and he asked what about it. I reminded him, and he just says it is what it is. Okay, so at this point I am aggravated, and that is when Karen walks in and asks, so what is he bitching about now? I look at her coldly and say, well, I worked 80 hours last week and y'all only paid me $600. She looks at me and says, you're contracted labor and you agreed to $100 per day, so why would we pay you more than that? I look at Peter and ask, is that how it is? He just says, you heard the lady. I went home and convinced myself that I was only working to cover my few living expenses anyway. The job isn't that hard. The only other things in this small town would have been assembling sheds or slinging chickens at a chicken plant. The next week, one of the guys I work with is getting yelled at in front of customers by Karen about what she claims is an OSHA violation. She claims that as part owner of the company, it is her responsibility to ensure that all OSHA regulations are met, and his apparent violation was him wearing tinted safety glasses. Now, this is BS because the bays faced east-west, and with how the cars pulled in, the workers got sun during the day, and the pit worker got it in the evening. I shake my head as I am walking in, and like a T-Rex in a dinosaur movie, it attracted Karen's attention, and she decides to shout at me, You have got something to say, you big bee? And I just kept walking. I told Sue she needed to have a long talk with Peter before Karen's mouth wrote checks he would have to cash. And she says, I just keep the books, don't involve me. So this behavior goes on another year, and finally, I am at my limit. On the day I started my malicious compliance, I was in a very bad mood. I had woken up to news that a good friend of mine that was responsible for me surviving being blown up in Iraq was taken out by a drunk driver. Not wanting to deal with anyone, I tell the shop, I will be working pit all day, and to just let me be. These guys have been working with me for a few years now and know something is up. I never once thought that this would be a day that I would need to deal with Karen, since I was working at the furthest shop from the main shop, and it was in the opposite direction of the casinos. But I wasn't so lucky. Or maybe I was. Peter and Karen show up and she storms into the pit and screams, Peter, come look at this mess! I have no idea what she's talking about, because I always kept the pit spotless and would clean as I worked, where a lot of others would clean at the end of the day. Her complaint was about 50 of the most common oil filters we would use in a day being stacked on my waste drums for easy access to me, so I wouldn't have to wait to the top guys to hand me filters. I did this all of the time, and Peter knew about it and never cared before. He comes down, looks around, and tells me, like he is talking to a teenager, clean up this pigsty. I shake my head and say, today is not the day, Peter. Move on and take her with you. This apparently infuriated Karen, who of course thought it was the utmost disrespect to her and Peter. And he tells me, if I don't like it, 
I am free to leave. So I left. Now don't freak out, this story isn't over yet. That's just the first flap of the butterfly's wings that started a massive crap storm. The next day, Peter calls me and asks me to swing by the main store on my way home. I think he's going to apologize about the day before, figured one of the other guys might have told him why I was so on edge. No, that was not what this was about. Peter was calling me in to inform me that for the next six months, I would be on a probation period for my actions. And for those six months, I would only be paid $50 a day and I wouldn't receive the normal $20 a day I received for driving to the other shops. I asked if he is serious about this and if he has seriously considered what he is doing. This is when Peter let his true colors shine. He tells me I am lucky I wasn't fired for my constant disrespect towards him and the co-owner Karen. How if he didn't pity me for being a struggling disabled veteran? I never once discussed my money with anyone I worked with. Why Peter thought I was broke and desperate was solely based on my appearance from what I could tell. He would have fired me long ago. Something inside me snapped and I just started laughing. He asked me what I thought was so funny and I stood to my full height and stepped to him like a drill sergeant about to give some wall-to-wall -wall counseling and say you should reconsider your life choices and who you choose to go into business with. Peter then says, what are you going to do, sue me or something? Go ahead if you think you can afford to. What do you get from the VA, like a thousand dollars a month? I know how bad you need this job. That wasn't my plan, but it kicked in my malicious compliance. And since I will always be a soldier to go to war. That day, I called a labor lawyer, paid the $3,000 retainer, and started my lawsuit for unsafe work environment, unpaid overtime, and minimum wage violations. All while continuing to work for him. It was glorious, but still not enough. It took about six months of my probation for the lawyer to get all of the paperwork together and filed, slow rolling it on my request, and this lawyer was a former Marine, so I think he had an idea of what I had in mind. After everything was ready, my lawyer filed the paperwork, and Peter and Karen were served at the main store while I was at work. They read the paperwork, and the process server for my lawyer stuck around to be a witness to what I knew would be coming. When they read that I was suing them, Karen and Peter flipped. Peter shouts, I should kick your butt, you ungrateful piece of crap. And Karen screams, you're effing fired, you pussy. I bet you weren't even really in the military. The process server recorded everything, gave it to my lawyer, who added to the lawsuit unlawful termination, because it is illegal to fire an employee because they are suing you. The next day, I opened up my lube shop car wash combo and started recruiting my former co-workers at higher pay plus commission. They also wanted to jump in on the lawsuit and my lawyer was more than happy to add them to it. So two years down the road after subpoenas to get security footage from the shops, the books going back five years and sworn testimonies, we go to a mediation to settle. They offer a measly 50,000 to split between the 15 of us on the lawsuit when that didn't even cover the unpaid overtime. We decline, then our Apache came in to save the day. Sent by the IRS, delivered to my lawyer, because of the request for the company's tax documents. Peter held each lube shop as its own individual LLC, each with its own tax ID and employment record. Peter and Karen thought it would be a smart move to file for a tax credit for employing a veteran at each of the six shops. In their filing, they claimed that they employed a veteran, me, as a full-time employee working a minimum 36 hours a week at a rate of $12 an hour. The government gives a tax break to companies that employ veterans. At the next mediation, my lawyer presented the reports to their lawyer and the mediator, and after a quick 20-minute discussion, Peter and Karen came back and agreed to settle at our request of $400,000 in unpaid overtime to be split between 15 of us, all legal fees, and a personal settlement for the unlawful termination suit of $20,000 for each shop I was listed as an employee at, as well as unpaid wages for the six months I was only paid $5 an hour. 
Their only demand was that we all agree to a gag order so that nothing would leave the mediator's table. Of course, we signed and we took our paychecks, but somehow their tax paperwork made its way to just the right person at the IRS and they decided to audit Peter and Karen. And an investigation was opened on them for tax fraud. I sold the shop I opened to the guys that came over and jumped in on the lawsuit. They each paid me $8,000 and I washed my hands of it. I put my house up for sale and moved away. I did go back about eight months later because the guy who was supposed to take care of the lawn had apparently been arrested and the yard went a few months without being cut before the city informed me that they were going to fine me $100 a day until it was brought to code. So I went down to mow it myself. While there, I decided to check in with my realtor to see if there was anything we could do about yard maintenance. And who do I see but little old Sue sitting pretty at the front desk. Sue couldn't speak fast enough to tell me what all had happened and it was perfect. What I thought was an Apache turned out to be an atom bomb. Peter filed bankruptcy to try and not go broke after making a plea deal for probation for tax fraud and paying a ton in unpaid taxes. Karen took off with some dude she met at a casino. I asked Sue two questions. If she knew who reported the fraudulent tax paperwork to the IRS and what happened with Peter's car collection. She told me I have no idea and to check the parking behind the realtor's office before leaving. On my way out, I took a peek behind the realtor's office to see a safety green SB1 sitting there. Apparently, Peter started selling off his cars early and cheap, hoping he would be able to buy them back after filing bankruptcy. To this day, I have no idea who, if anyone, actually turned in the paperwork to the IRS. My personal theory is whoever was tasked with compiling it all with their claims noticed something strange and reported it. However it happened, it couldn't have happened to anyone more deserving. Jumping down to the comment section on this one, there's one from a user called Lizlo Dude. It says, getting a $20,000 settlement each for all six companies because they listed you as an employee of all of them is an excellent Uno reverse. If someone's response to sue me is okay, you should probably be worried. There are so many stories on Reddit about people not being paid properly but most of them don't take the time or spend the money to go try and get back what is theirs. This also leads me to believe that we're not educating people very well in schools. There should be some classes on labor laws and reading a darn paycheck and knowing what's supposed to be on that paycheck and making sure you get paid properly. OP, well done on getting what you deserved. And honestly, a huge amount of respect for bringing all your coworkers along with you so they could get what they deserve too. Well done. 